So I wanted to play Super Lucky's Tale because platformers are a dying breed. Rest in peace, platformers. But it put itself in the hot seat early on by likening itself to Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, Banjo-Kazooie. And as we all know, Banjo-Kazooie is the greatest platformer of all time, and there's no point in discussing that further. Just watch this. No. Point. It also doesn't help that the last game that compared itself to Banjo-Kazooie was Ukulele. Yeah. So that happened. Now, see, the tradition of platformers usually rely on taking two things and throwing them together. Uh, put a bear with a bird, uh, a lizard with a bat, a, a cat thing with a tiny robot, a, a plumber with a magic hat, a, a raccoon with a criminal record. Y you get the point. Super Lucky takes a fox and gives it a cape. What does the cape do? Nothing. This is all about style. So the whole story behind Super Lucky's tale is, you know, you have a fox and he's trying to help his sister get the pages of a book back because this cat group called the Kitty Litter wants them, and okay, it's just a big excuse so that you can run around and have some fun and collect things, okay? That's what platformers are, alright? That's all they are. And, and for the record, I have no problem with platformers being bright and colorful like this. I, I mean, I don't need the dark, gritty reboot of this genre, like if we mashed up Mario Odyssey with Bloodborne. No, 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 don't do it, Nakey Jakey. No one wants that. Especially me. Ah, uh, anyway... Damn it! The way Super Lucky's Tale is laid out is that there are several different hub areas and a little cat will come by from the kitty litter, tell you that you're not powerful enough to defeat me, and then you have to prove them wrong by going and defeating them. Each area has several different levels that you can go into, and this actually reminded me most of Super Mario Bros. 3, because if you remember in that game, there were several different hubs, and there was like World 1, 2, and then you could go to 1, 3, and 1, 4, etc. Another thing that reminded me of those old-school platformers is that you have all of your skills available at the beginning. It's just that you use them in new and creative ways throughout the game. And I guess that's kind of nice, but I, I would have liked to be able to, you know, gain new magical flying fox powers, I guess? Is it a little concerning that his eyes follow me wherever I go? It's kind of amazing, but also pretty disturbing. Lucky I... Please stop. And there are, of course, colorful collectibles that you get throughout the game. You have to collect coins, and uh, instead of a jiggy or a star, you get a, a clover. Because foxes love clovers. What do you mean you don't like clovers? Oh, alright, you're cool then. Apparently foxes also love digging, because you do a lot of that. I didn't know that, but we all learn something, right? Games are good for us that way. What a fre freaking B! Oh, ugh. Uh, why do I only have three hearts? As you might have noticed in that clip too, there are some technical issues like you have some audio dropout. There are also some clipping issues where you just get trapped in a floor and that's kind of weird because, I mean, I thought the whole thing was that I could dig, but apparently not through wood. Well, at least they gave me a trophy for it. That's sweet. All in all, I would have just said that this is standard platforming fare, and it's a fun time while you're playing, but this game had to be compared to Banjo-Kazooie, so we have to hold it to a higher standard. And then we get into one of the biggest problems that we have in Super Lucky's Tale, which is that it just doesn't have the personality of the game that I was just talking about. You know, that one. Like, take our villains, for instance. What is up with the kitty litter? I have not chosen to be a Meowlin warrior. What? What is this? Oh, will you just stop talking now? Oh, hold up, hold up, one second. I'm gonna take a selfie, okay? Yeah, I can get you in the picture. Don't worry, I can. I, I just need to get a good angle. It's kind of tricky here. Bear with me. Bear with me. I got this. I got this covered. It's a new camera. I agree, worm farmers. Actually, the characters with the most personality are, like, not really even main characters in the game. And how did they get the Oak Ridge Boys to do a cameo? Worm Papa Mau Mau. Urban 
play free bird free bird Haha, <laughs> finally Fluffy Tails gets the recognition it deserves! Hello, I'm Lucky, your friendly neighborhood exterminator. Just whip these rats right off the ledge, that's good. Oh, hello, Mr. Bird. Whip you right off the ledge. I don't think this is exactly what they intended when they built this game. Oh, hey guys, uh, yeah, look, I'm sorry I tail whipped y'all into this little pen here, but, uh, we're all friends, right? Uh, you know, uh, ooh, tough crowd. Yeah, I hear that chickens are usually pretty violent in video games, is that, uh, that true? So yeah, besides collecting coins and clovers, there's not too much else to do in the game to develop your character. And Lucky really doesn't say much, so as far as story goes, it's kind of limited. It's also four hub worlds and five if you have the DLC, which isn't really all that much game in terms of what platformers usually provide, even modern ones, which unfortunately it has to live up to with the likes of that Mario Odyssey and, of course, <clears throat> Banjo-Kazooie. Like, who knows, maybe Lucky the Fox would have benefited from a sidekick after all, like maybe a, a hedgehog or... Oh, right. Free bird! Come on, I have 15 minutes to kill. Free bird! I don't know this one. 